He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Hey guys, I wanted to go through some more stuff on ChemDoodle today. Uh, last time we used this software, we were using the feature that would assign the IUPAC name to a molecule, and we were using that to kind of learn some of the trickier IUPAC rules for our uh, polycyclic structures. And uh, this time I want to show you another feature. ChemDoodle is able to assign R and S stereochemistry to any stereo center. So I want to use that feature to do a little more practice and expand on my previous tutorial on the Kahn Ingold prelog convention and extend that convention to some slightly trickier molecules uh, that we didn't get a chance to do previously. So we'll do one quickly to review here. Um, <clears throat> we're looking at this molecule and recall that any, anytime we have a stereo, uh, if there's a carbon connected to four different groups, that's going to be a stereo center. And the first thing we have to do, so first we're acknowledging that this one is a stereo center. And we're saying that uh, we, by the Kahn Ingold Prelog Convention, we have to assign these groups priority. And we're going to do so according to atomic mass. So we have to look at these four groups and say, okay, which one is heaviest? Well, uh, bromine is definitely heaviest. So let's call that number one. And then next heaviest is going to be chlorine, so we'll call that number two. And then next heaviest after that will be nitrogen, so that will be three. And then certainly the lightest is hydrogen, so we'll call that four. Now notice that we didn't say that this group here was the heaviest because it's tempting to look at this and see, oh, there's some alkyl groups over here. This is very heavy. It must be the heaviest. Recall that for Conningold Prelog, we're going one atom at a time. So it's just bromine beats chlorine beats nitrogen. We're not worried at all about uh, anything else connected to that atom. So uh, that's how we uh, assign the priorities of these groups. So the next thing that we have to do according to Kahn Ingold Prelog is we have to orient ourselves so that the lowest priority group is facing away from us. So in this particular case, that would be looking this way, right? We want to look uh, as though we're in the screen on this edge of the molecule. So if that's hard to visualize, we can always draw a Newman projection. Uh, so if we're looking this way, we're looking it's as though we're looking down this carbon-hydrogen bond, right? Because that would put the hydrogen away from us. Uh, if we do that, then we're looking up, straight up at that bromine. Uh, and we're looking down and left at the chlorine. And then we're looking down and right at nitrogen. Okay, so that's that's making it a little easier to see how we uh, how we're going to assign clockwise or counterclockwise. Recall that we now just go for we trace a circle from one to two to three. So if we were to do that on the Newman projection, we would go like this, and we would see that that is counterclockwise. So we're going to expect S. Anytime we go counterclockwise from one to two to three, that's going to be S. So now what we want to do is uh, use the feature on ChemDoodle and make sure that we were right. So let's go here, let's go to stereochemistry and let's assign R and S. And we see that we were right, it is indeed S. And uh, so that's, uh, that, that is good to know that we did that correctly. Another interesting feature, we can always go to this carbon and we can see what it would look like with the opposite stereochemistry. So we could force R, and you see what happened there, it just swapped two of the groups. Remember that at any time we swap two groups, we're inverting the stereochemistry. And we can just undo that to get back to our original molecule. So that's what it would look like with the other stereochemistry. So this is a very cool feature of ChemDoodle because now you don't have to just work through the examples that I uh, go through in my tutorials. You can use this and you can draw any molecule from your homework, your problem sets, from your exams, anything like that. And you can practice on it and check, uh, and check your answers. This will tell you whether you were correct or not. So that's kind of a cool feature of this uh, software. Let's go through these other ones. That was just a warm up. Now I want to go to this one because 
This is uh, showing a feature that we didn't talk about in my previous tutorial. We didn't really talk about what to do with pi bonds. So that's a little bit uh, something new that we can check out right here. So first we're gonna notice that this is a stereo center. We've got, we've got four different groups. And the reason we have four different groups, these are these seem like the same chain, but this has a pi bond on there. If that pi bond wasn't there, then those would be the same group, and this would not be a stereo center. It would be a chiral because of the symmetry. But because of that pi bond, this is a stereo center. So let's go ahead and assign, uh, let's assign the priority. We've got carbon, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Oxygen is definitely, whoops, uh, is definitely the heaviest. So let us assign that as number one and hydrogen is definitely the lightest so let's call that number four but now between these two carbons we have to decide which one wins and the way we're going to do that is this so let's take this carbon here anytime we have a carbon uh, that has a pi bond if it has a let's say a double bond to another carbon we're going to treat that as two separate bonds to two separate carbons so what is this carbon connected to these ties so we have to keep going this carbon is connected to carbon carbon hydrogen right it's as though it's connected to two other carbons and now this carbon over here, this one is connected to this carbon atom and then two implied hydrogens. So this one is carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this group clearly wins. It's as though a carbon cancels and a hydrogen cancels and then carbon beats hydrogen. So we are gonna call this carbon priority two. So let's call that number two and let's call this guy number three. Now we're all set. We're all ready in the correct orientation to assign RNS because luckily the lowest priority group, the hydrogen, is away from us. So we can just trace from one to two to three like that. And we have done that in clockwise fashion. So we should expect this stereo center to be R. And so now let's check. Let's use this feature. Oh, let's get the whole molecule there. <clears throat> and let's assign R and S. And it is indeed R, so we were correct. And uh, that is the additional rule there with the pi bonds for that one. So let's let's use that rule. Oh, by the way, let's uh, let's go ahead and and see what would happen if we switch that. So instead of R, let's say we force S. And so we see right there, just the, the wedge and the dash have swapped, and that's what S would look like. We know that if we invert that stereo, uh, if we invert two groups, then we will invert the stereo center. So that's S. We can undo and just go right back to R like we had it. Uh, and now let's look at this next example. So again, we're gonna have to use this new rule we just learned regarding pi bonds. And so this is the stereo center right here, this carbon, uh, because we've got hydrogen, we've got this group, and we've got this alkenal group, and we've got this alkynal group. So let's go ahead and assign priorities. So <clears throat> the hydrogen is definitely, definitely going to be number four. That is the lightest. But we do have three carbons, and carbons, they all tie. So now we have to see what they are connected to. So this carbon is connected to two fluorines and, uh, and an implied hydrogen. So fluorine, fluorine, hydrogen. Uh, now this one over here has three bonds to another carbon. So we have to treat that as three separate carbons and we're gonna say carbon, carbon, carbon. One for the sigma bond and one for each pi bond. Uh, then we go over here and we say that this carbon is attached to two carbons because each of these in the double bond is connected to carbon and one implied hydrogen. So we're going to say CCH. Okay, so now to assign the priority, we got to find the heaviest element. So that's fluorine here. That means this group is going to be the top priority. Or not the, uh, yeah, it will be the top priority. 
uh, because of those fluorines right there. So that's gonna be priority one. Then over here, we have carbon, carbon, carbon versus carbon, carbon, hydrogen. It's as though two of the carbons cancel out and then carbon beats hydrogen. So let's call this one priority two. And then that leaves this as priority three. So we've got our one, our two, our three, and our four. And luckily, uh, the lowest uh, priority group is away from us already. That's the hydrogen. So we can just trace one to two to three. And so once again, we have gone clockwise to do that. And so we would expect this to be R. And let's now go ahead and check our answer. Uh, whoops. So let's check our answer. And we see that we do get R just like expected. And so that one was correct. Now let's just quickly check, see what happens if we force S. And once again, we've just swapped that wedge bond and that dash bond. That's what S would look like. And uh, let's just go back to, uh, to R. So that's that one with those pi bonds. Let's do one more here with this interesting bicyclic system. Uh, so we've got a couple of stereocenters actually here. Uh, one, two, three. It's the presence of this hydroxyl right there. If this hydroxyl weren't there, there'd be some symmetry. Uh, but because of this hydroxyl, the directions around the ring are now different. And especially this carbon right here is definitely a stereocenter. Let's just do one of these. Uh, otherwise, it'll get a bit messy. So let's do this carbon right here. Uh, we've got oxygen, we've got hydrogen, we've got carbon, and we've got carbon. So we know that oxygen is definitely going to be number one. And we know that hydrogen is going to be number four. Now, in terms of these two carbons, right, those ties, so we have to see what they are connected to. And uh, this carbon, <clears throat> this carbon right here is attached to this carbon and then two implied hydrogens. So that is carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen. And then down here, this carbon is attached to this carbon and this bridgehead carbon and this hydrogen. So that's carbon, carbon, hydrogen. So carbons uh, cancel, hydrogens cancel, but this carbon beats this hydrogen. So we are going to say that this carbon here is priority two, and this carbon here is priority three. So now we have, uh, it's a little bit of a trickier situation because we do have to put the hydrogen away from us. So the best way to do this is to pretend we're viewing this top down. It's as though we're looking directly down on the molecule there. So uh, if we do that, if we envision ourselves in the, in the screen right there and we go one to two to three, we are going clockwise if we can imagine ourselves looking downwards. And so we would expect this one to be R And uh, now let's check. And we do get R for the one that we expected. And we also have R and S over here. And you can do those ones on your own to make sure that that's gonna work. Recall that this way around the ring with the hydroxyl is gonna be a higher priority than the one without. Uh, so those are just a couple of examples. I wanted to extend my previous tutorial on Conningold Prelog to uh, show you what to do when pi bonds are present because that's a little bit of a different rule that we do need to know and I didn't cover it before. Uh, and then I also just wanted to show you some of these features on ChemDoodle where we can assign RNS, we can invert the stereo center, we can assign attributes to show the priorities around the stereo center. So there's a lot of cool tools here to practice your uh, RNS assignments. Uh, so go ahead, if you are interested, uh, there's a link in, my, in the uh, description of this clip and uh, it's super, super affordable. So uh, please check it out if you are interested in practicing your chemistry this way. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's all for now. 
Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.